So let's say I give you a hundred apples in a box. But before giving you the apples, I took one and I injected with cyanide and I put it back in the box and I mix it up. And I give you the box. And I say, hey, here's a box of apple, you know, take it home, enjoy. But there's one apple in here that's injected with cyanide. And if anybody eats it, you know, he or she's going to die. So would you take the box of apple and would you take it home and to your family and start eating? Um, no, because you'll be crazy if you do, because knowing what you know, that there is potentially one apple in here that could kill you or a member of your family, you would not take the box. You're going to tell the person, go to hell, you know, take your apples and, you know, shove it. So, the point I'm trying to make is that we um, kind of deride people when they make those kind of decisions based on, for example, Muslims. I mean, the fact is that of, all, of, of, of a number, let's say, of each 100 Muslim, there is a percentage in there that one, you know, believes in Sharia law, two, believes in jihad, three, believes in suicide bombing, three, or, or, or believe that, you know, killing of innocent people is justified. So, in, in, a, in a batch of Muslim people, you're going to have a, a percentage that hold those beliefs and a percentage that want to act on those beliefs. So it is perfectly rational for people to say we should keep those people, we should keep Muslims out of America. Because within that group there are people, I don't know what the percentage is, but the fact is there are, and I'm going to get into some other percentages in a minute, there are people in that group who, you know, they don't want to come in and steal or shoplift or, or um, you know, drink and walk on the streets. They want to come in and terrorize people, kill a massive amount of people, do massive damage to property. I mean, this is not the usual stuff. So, it is totally rational for people who want to restrict these people from coming into the United States. Now, people try to equate this with what happened in Nazi Germany with the Jews. There is no comparison. The two things are apple and oranges, okay? The, the Jews in Nazi Germany weren't doing anything wrong. They were just being singled out for who they are whether it be because of jealousy or because of whatever racist attitude and perceptions people had at the time and some people still have it now but the point is that the Jews weren't doing bad stuff they were singled out by the Nazis because of their race that is totally different from what we're talking about now now we have Muslims who want to do bad stuff and, and people are not pointing out this difference. So the two things are totally, totally different. And Donald Trump needs to point that out. When people say, oh, you're, you're going down the road of, of, of Europe and, Na and Germany with the Nazis and the Jews and the this and the that. No, you, you say, here is the thing, the Jews, it's totally different. Jews weren't doing anything bad. People just hated them for whatever reason. In the case we're talking about here right now, we've had terrorism going on for decades. And nothing is being done about it. So people are angry at this group not because of their religion or because of their race or because of the country they're coming from. 
so this is not discrimination based on those things what people are saying is and what the fact is is that people from this group want to create mass havoc in the Western world and that is the basis for wanting to keep them out the other thing you need to point out is terrorism is is a Muslim problem why are we having to spend billions and billions of dollars and we have to go through the inconvenience and take the risk I mean for every batch of Muslims that come into America as I said there's a certain percentage there that's going to end up doing us harm why should we have to take that risk just because we want to say well we're not racist or we're not against Muslims or whatever we, we shouldn't we should we should be allowed to say that within this group there are people who want to do us severe damage and we're keeping the whole group out we should be able to say that and we should be able to say we we cannot go on spending all this money for security and for survey surveillance and 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 you know all the money that we spend in homeland security for planes for airports uh just because we don't want we we want to like be fair to this group of people no that it, if you belong to a group in the case of islam you have a responsibility to root out the bad people within your group to maintain your reputation terrorism is a problem that Muslims have to deal with and they have to solve it they're the ones who should be spending their money and their blood and their treasure and we should in a way force them to do it by saying to them if you don't do it we're you're not going to be part of our society because we don't know or, or well we're not going to let you into our country in the future because we don't know who are the good guys and who are the bad guys we we have no way of knowing and it, it's perfectly rational for people to say well given that we have no way of knowing we have to keep the whole group out people are going to say well that's not fair because you have people who are who are good people and and they're going to be kept out but as i said people who belong to a group have a responsibility to maintain their reputation and they have the responsibility to root out the bad apples okay and they have a responsibility to isolate themselves what we haven't seen I mean since 9-11 we haven't seen Muslims publicly distance themselves from terrorism in a significant way we haven't seen the, uh, we haven't seen public demonstrations we haven't seen uh, rallies we haven't seen protests okay we haven't had influential uh, imams come out and and say that they're not part of this and they condemn this and that they would pledge to do whatever they could to eradicate it they these people they sit there and they wait for the West to take care of this problem it's not the West's responsibility when Christianity had its problems uh, with violence and, uh, and bigotry and so on, who rooted it out? I mean, Christians didn't sit around waiting for somebody else to take care of it. It was taken care of by the Christians themselves. They, uh, they, they isolated those people. They, they worked towards cleaning up. And today, there are some yes there are there are some incidents some some Christians who are extreme extremists but broadly speaking Christians took care of it now it's up to Muslims to take care of their problem terrorism is a Muslim problem it's not a problem for the West it's created by their ideology um, whatever their ideology preaches that's what people end up doing there is a problem there okay now if we continue to allow immigration we're putting ourselves uh, uh, immigration from Muslim countries look at the risk we're putting ourselves through here here are the stats 
in in Muslim countries, let's go down the list. Um, Afghanistan. This, these these are the percentage of people who believe in Sharia law. In Afghanistan, ninety nine percent of people believe in Sharia law. So, for every statistically, for every hundred people you let in here from Afghanistan, ninety nine of them want Sharia law over American law. Okay. Uh, Pakistan 84% so out of every hundred people coming in here from Pakistan 84 of them believe in Sharia law okay uh, go down the list Bangladesh 82% Iraq 91% Morocco 83% Egypt 74% Jordan 71% Tunisia 56% and you go down the list they're all 40 percent 50 percent so majority of the majority of these Muslim countries the people coming in to the United States uh, a large percentage believe in Sharia law so what are you gonna get it means that the percentage of people coming in here they they believe that Sharia law should trump American law and they want to act on those laws so it is perfectly rational for people to say we should restrict immigration from these areas because you're putting the country at risk you're putting the country at risk and again it, it has nothing to do with um, racial discrimination or religious discrimination you're not we're not saying that we don't like these people or we don't want these people coming into America simply because they are Muslims that's not what we're saying we're saying that you don't want them to come in because potentially within their group there are violent people who want to do massive damage large-scale damage to the United States and the only way to keep them out is to restrict the entire group there is no other way to do it because there is no way of screening people to really get to the ones who are who are the bad ones there is no way to do it and you know people go on about uh, how this is unconstitutional blah 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 it's not true it's not true there is a section of law that allows the president to do this and uh, my next post I'm going to talk about that um, it allows the president basically to suspend the entry of any people coming in any category of aliens or any class of aliens coming in for whatever reason it, it is clear and um, that's going to be my next post